It is our special Ed's Not Dead segment known as Teacher Tips. Teacher Tips. And Mr. Siddons is sweating because <laughs> he thought Teacher He misunderstood tips. the segment. He totally didn't. Really, I interpreted it the way I wanted to interpret he, he it. He did not understand how Teacher Tips segment worked. I knew that it, we were talking about project-based learning, but. Project success. <laughs> Pebble. Uh, yes. So to, re- to reiterate, teacher tips. <laughs> How does it work, Mr. Craig? We choose a theme, an idea. Yeah. Today will be project based learning. Okay. And then we so all t- we all share some tips about project based learning. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure the extent of the tips that I'm going to have, but um, but I might have. Some You're a great thought. facilitator, I Robbie. Might, yeah, don't I'm, don't sell yourself. I might have some thoughts on it. There you go. I did close out. I did get rid of that rubric that you shared, though. I like that, that project-based learning yeah. rubric. Okay. Yeah. So, so why don't you tell everybody what project-based learning is? Just, <laughs> let's that just, is, let's just start. That oh, is, I did put a definition in there. You did? Where yeah, it's, it? a nerd, no, there it it's, a, it's a nerd okay. definition. So project-based learning is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an authentic, engaging, and complex question, problem, or challenge. That definition came from the Buck Institute for Education. So the best way to do it is just to get started. So let's get started. Uh, Mr. Krabs, what are your thoughts or tips about PBL? So, I mean, that was always the kind of thing was like, well, how do I get started? I don't know how to start. And just step one is just being like, well, I'm going to do it. Do you, you, can I interrupt you? Can I interrupt you? Do you want to tell the story? Um, uh, the fork in the road between differentiation and project based <laughs> learning, or was that inquiry based? It learning? was inquiry, which it, which, uh, which is close enough. Which leads, yes, yes, yeah, similar. Yeah. So the story is, uh, we were <laughs> summer of 2013 or something like that. Is that what it was? I don't know. I got 20, 2012. Was the summer I got married? I think. Maybe, I think yeah. 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 So we had some pretty intense that discussions. That was a great wedding, by yeah. the way. I, I, enjoyed, I had a good time there. <laughs> Did you? I didn't know you, man. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm still waiting on that invite. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> So we had some intense discussion about whether we were going to do differentiation or inquiry-based learning. I was in the inquiry-based learning camp. and felt, pretty, was felt pretty confident. He was. He thought he had it sewn up. <laughs> Got married, went away for like seven months. <laughs> you did go away. <laughs> he, yeah. he was gone the whole summer. Jeez. Yeah. Came back and, uh, oh, hey, we're doing differentiation. Yeah, he lost his jets. <laughs> it was your, your dear friend, Kelly Phillips. She, yep. She, she, Mama Cass. That's right. That's she, right. She, <laughs> She had the sway over me. She All right. Did. So anyway, anyways, go ahead. So um, the one thing that I always found most helpful was, so you get into this discussion all the time. So project-based learning, right? Over the course of many days and many, many tasks in a row. So how do you manage that within the course of a classroom? Um, so something that I did and that I saw other teachers do was break down the entire project step-by-step, task-by-task. Now, how we did it was had like a big visual chart that students went and like checked off when they had completed something. And that way I could just look at the chart and the board and I could be like, all right, who's done what, who needs to do what, um, you know, all right, this person is still working on this skill. So it looks like they're working, but they're, they're having trouble with this particular skill. So maybe I need to sit down with them and work with them. Nowadays you could do it with like Google classroom or Google doc or something right. like that. Right. But it was supremely helpful in terms of managing student workflow knowing what students were doing and that any student didn't get too far behind. Because that's the worry always is that we're going to work on this for like five days and some kid, you know, finishes and then the other kid is like, well, I'm I'm on step two out of 10 and you're caught flat footed like, oh, I, I thought you were much further along right, than right, that. Right. Um, so that would be one in the first step, I would say, is kind of like break it down into any any individual steps and iterations that you want students to complete. Mm-hmm. And I think your experience, your previous teaching experience, lent itself to project-based learning where you have a, maybe a more open-ended curriculum or um, just a, a class that might naturally lend itself to it, I, right? This is too right. I, I have so <laughs> many jokes that I'm waiting Why? about Mr. Crable's uh, teaching, but go ahead. But, uh, Are you feeling sensitive because you're not as informed about project-based project no, learning? I, I'm ready to go. Okay, go I think... Um, I think it, it, if you go with the project-based learning mindset in, let's say, I'm going to use social studies because that's what I know. Oftentimes, I've worked with brand new teachers who will who are really excited to bring in current events, for example, and that's all well and good. But it, it doesn't necessarily naturally lend itself to what you're teaching in the curriculum, and it could be very disjointed. Whereas if you if you went with a PBL mindset, you are looking. You can start with your essential questions, your your big picture pieces of the curriculum when you're talking about economics in unit three or whatever, you can have all of the project-based assignments 
the choices that you give kids that can be all related to economics. Um, they could be all related to world hunger and as a, as a major topic, and they can actually work on those projects throughout the entire unit and making sure that there's direct connections to the actual curriculum that you're teaching. It's funny, as you're, as you're talking, I'm thinking back to some of the meetings we had with uh, Margie Lope. Yeah, who works for IB, and yeah, I'm like, our friend yeah, a lot of what we're talking about is you were just talking, and, and I was thinking because I had the same thing where I was like, oh, technology, and and like you know programming stuff that was all like really easy to do project based learning. Um, it lent itself, as you said, very well. But then, oh yeah, IB does have a lot of that stuff um, for the humanities and and yeah. sciences and stuff like that. Yeah, my, well, when I used to talk about technology with Margie, she always used to come back to me with the the technology of the mind. It doesn't have to be yeah, it doesn't have to be a computer yeah. Um, the one thing that I think is great about it that I've seen teachers do increasingly over the years is that metacognitive part of project-based learning. Because it, because the way it it takes time, you can have kids you can it, you can really build in intentional times for kids to reflect on what they're doing, to yeah, think right. to think about their learning, to think about the mistakes they make, to think about how those mistakes inform their next steps. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's made for metacognition and having kids think about their thinking. Um, you know, it's so easy to fall into the trap in the classroom of like, get this done, get it in. We're done. See you tomorrow. Absolutely. Get this done, get yeah. it in, get it yeah. done. Yeah. You know, with the multi-day thing, you're like, well, let's pump yeah. the brakes a little bit. Right. You're going to be faster here. You're going to be slower here. Yep. yep. But like, it's, yep. we're not. You don't have 40 minutes from now. It's not do or die. And if they're know? trying to find solutions to a problem and things don't work, they've got to reflect on those things. Yeah. I, I, you're right. And with tests, you know, kids don't have to. I mean, they may reassess. They'll take tests. Uh, but they don't really have much time to reflect on uh, no, on, no. on what they you're, you're on to the next thing. No. So I, I, I think that that's a key part of learning that's hard to do in the pressures of classroom, but I think PBL lends itself to it. And we used to, my last teaching experience, we would do a whole, it was a whole quarter long project. They picked a question right. and they researched it and we had check marks along the way and they had the entire quarter to really work on it. And obviously, if you just told sixth graders to work on this project for the entire quarter and you didn't check in on them in, in a purposeful way, it wouldn't work. So don't do that. I, I did that. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. probably about my fourth or fifth year teaching. I had yeah, this idea and there. I didn't have any idea what I was doing and yeah, it was not a success. A surprise, they yeah, didn't have it done. It's weird. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the other thing too that you have to account for is that, and this is, you know, in a when you have a, when you have a high level of, heterogeneity in your classroom and you have kids kids at all different levels and you have some kids that may really struggle with reading that may not be able to bring to bear some of the things you'd like or you'd want them to be able to do in in pbl and so you have to figure out how you scaffold kids to be able to do the same kind of work um and get to an outcome where they're they're really going to get something out of it Um, yeah so you have to be because pbl could be a very slippery slope of Casey, you know that my my favorite line: high involvement, low learning. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's checking what, yeah, boxes. That's what you have to watch out for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One last point I'll make about it is, um, in terms of the grading, um, you know, it's not an all or nothing grade. Yeah, exactly. You don't turn it in. You work on it Monday and then turn it on Friday. And, oh, you didn't turn it in. Well, you get a zero. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you get credit and it's you get formative. for all everything along the way. You know, and like maybe they there's ten steps and. For whatever reason, nine out of the ten steps they could do, and they just couldn't get that tenth one done in that in that time frame. Mm-hmm. You know, they can still do it, but they're going to get nine out of ten sort of subgrades or substrands or however you want to put right. it, substandards, however your grading system looks like. But it's not you turn this project in and boom, boom, boom. It's neat. It's this. It's no. It's did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? You sure. improved this. All those different aspects that you've been working on that you honestly. The whole point is that you already know because you've been monitoring over the right. the number of days that the kids have been working on it. And so. please, 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 when you have projects, yes, don't have every group present to the class. Uh, that's the worst. And, and waste three periods. That's the uh, worst of class time. How okay. many times? How many times did you do that? Now as a teacher? it's group. Uh, I did. Uh, you know what? Actually, I did do that, and then I got called out for it. My 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 dear my dear friend and mentor Joanne Steckler back in the mid nineties. She very nicely said, "You might want to think about how you could use your instructional time more wisely." And I was <laughs> like, "What? What do you mean?" I was like, "What do you mean?" It was good. It's Apple Week. The kids really got to learn a lot. 
they got they, to listen to each as, other. As they laid slumped in their chairs. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. This is good. PBL, project-based learning. Uh, Mr. Siddons will be tweeting out some links to learn more about it. Thanks for tuning in to Teacher Tips. Thank you.